Folks, welcome back to another episode of Reading Chess Moves for 10 Minutes, D4, D5, Bishop F4, and it's the first London ever played on the channel. And I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm just going to copy their moves, Bishop F5, Knight F3, Knight F6, and now E3, E6. So far, just a typical London opening, getting all the pieces out, and now Knight to D2. And here I play Bishop to E7. I want to castle as fast as possible because I have no idea what I'm doing here. I usually just play the Anglin Gambit, but it's getting to the point where it's hard to win games with the Anglin Gambit. But if you're below 1500, I think the Anglin Gambit works very well. So give it a shot. And now they play C4, striking forward at the center. And if I take, then their Bishop comes out for free in a good space. So I'll just back up the pawn with C6. And now they play C5, taking the space. But I can just play B6 right here and target it. But first I decide to finish development and play Knight to D7. They play bishop to e2, getting ready to castle. And now we both castle. Now I play b6, trying to break up their overextended pawns. But they're fine, they can just play b4. And after I play a5, I might be in a bit of trouble if they find the right move here. And that would be b5, and I can't take this pawn. Because if I take, then they push to c6, and my knight's under attack. And if I go back, now my knight and my queen are forked. Bishop defends the pawn, and I'm losing. I can't take the pawn. And if I take the other way, then the same thing happens. And now if I go knight to b6, they play c7, my queen's under attack, I go queen to c8, now they take the pawn, my knight's under attack again, I play bishop capture c5, and now after something like knight to b3, my bishop's under attack, I go bishop to b4, and now they have the open file with the rook, defending the pawn with the bishop and the rook, and I'm just in trouble here. Even material, but they're about to get a queen. And in order to stop them from promoting, I probably have to give up material. So I'm going to lose the game if this happens, but they don't find b5. Instead, they just play a3. And now I play knight to h5, attacking the bishop here. And if I take here, they have to take back with the pawn. And that would weaken up their middle pawn and just create a terrible pawn structure. So they don't want that. So they move the bishop back to g3. And now I take the bishop. And now I have two bishops. And even though it's an even material trade, everyone knows that having two bishops is a slight advantage. And here, what pawn do you take back with? Well, the general rule of thumb is to take back towards the middle. So take back with the h pawn. And that would be best. But they decide to take back with the f pawn and open up their rook here. And that makes the rook more active but it also makes a big weakness on e3 and the pawn chain is now a lot weaker and I'm going to target the pawn with bishop to g5 but it would have been better to play bishop to f6 because you're going to see they're going to be able to defend this pawn and if I go bishop to f6 well now this pawn is pinned to the rook and this bishop is also on an open diagonal controlling the b1 square and after something like takes takes now I can have my rook on the open file and I'm going to target the c5 pawn so this is actually much better and leads to a slightly winning game, but I didn't really think like that at the time. Instead, I just play bishop to g5, and I'm targeting this pawn right here. So they take with their knight, and after I take back with my queen, I'm still attacking the pawn, but they can just play queen to b3, defending the pawn. And after a4, now the queen just goes to c3, still defending the pawn, and there's no easy way to get the queen off that square. So what do I do? Well, b capture c5, and now I open up the file here. Since my bishop is controlling the b1 square, I can play rook to b8. Now I'm controlling the open file. I move the f rook instead of the a rook because the a rook prevents the queen from going to a5 and now they play knight to f3 attacking my queen and i want to keep my queen on this pawn here but the best move would be queen to d8 just rotating my queen around and bringing it over to the open file which is where i should be attacking but instead i play queen to h6 staying on the pawn here and i really want to play rook to b3 because that would attack the queen and the e3 pawn and then i could take the pawn so they move their knight back to d2 to defend and now I figure I should probably do something with this knight. Because it's not really doing anything back here. All the other pieces are doing something. So let's play knight to f6. And now bishop to d3. Oh my gosh, game over. Do you see it immediately? Because I did not see it, even though I should have. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I missed this. But yeah, now there's no queen defending this pawn. You can just take on e3. And after the king moves, you just take the bishop. And you're winning. Game over. But I don't know, I didn't even realize that the bishop now blocks the queen from defending this. And they didn't either. I was just thinking about how they're blocking my bishop from defending the b1 square. And how I'm not going to be able to get this pawn. But it's so obvious now, I don't even know how I missed it. Knight to e4, completely missing the win here. But it's still an even game. They take, I take back, they take, I take back. And it's a drawn game, but a slight advantage for white here. But it's a 1400 versus 1600. Let's see if they can do it. Rook a to b1. And I don't want to take that rook, because if I take that rook... They'll take back with their rook, and now they control the open file. So I want them to take my rook so I can control the open file. I play queen to g5. And now I'm attacking the pawn. I'm also getting ready to rotate over. Or go to d5. Getting ready to play rook to b3. And also there's no sort of pawn pushes later. So I think this is a good move. 
Now they do exactly what I wanted them to do and they take my rook. And after I take back, now I'm controlling the open file. They can't bring their rook over because the queen does not defend that square and I'm about to bring my rook up. And I think I have a winning endgame now. So rook to e1 and they're defending this pawn now so the queen can move. And I should just play rook to b3 here and I'm winning this pawn. But I'm afraid that after rook to b3, they're going to play queen to a5, threatening a back rank checkmate. And I can obviously just play like h6 here and that's the best move and I'm winning. But I was just worried about all these checks and losing material. I didn't want to lose all my pawns. But obviously this is just completely winning. But I thought I can defend everything and it's much simpler if I just play queen to d5. And now after queen to a5, I have queen b3. And after queen c7, attacking my rook, now I have queen to b7. And if they trade queens, now I have the open file still. And I'm getting ready to take these pawns. So they don't want to trade queens, so they go back to a5. And now I play rook to a8, attacking the queen. But now I lose any advantage that I had, and white has one move that potentially wins the game or draws. And there's only one move that's good for white. Every other move leads to a losing endgame. So what's the best move for white? And it's queen to b6, and now I lose control of the file. If I take, they take back with their pawn, and they can get behind it with the rook. And it's either winning for white or a draw. And whatever I do next, they're just playing rook to b1 anyway, and they control the open file now. And whoever controls this open file wins the endgame, basically. But instead of queen to b6, they play queen to c3. And it's over. Now queen to b6, and if they take my queen, I take back with the pawn, and the pawn is going down. But it's probably still a draw, I think. Instead, they play rook to c1. But that's worse. Because now rook to b8. King f2. And now I take their queen. And after the rook takes back, now my rook comes up. And you can't stop it. I'm getting a queen soon. If they take, I take back with the pawn, and it's gone. Rook to c1. Getting back to defend. Now I take their pawn. Rook to b1. Trying to get a back rank threat. But there's no threat. I just block it with rook to b3. Getting out of the way of the pawn. They play rook to a1. Attacking the pawn. But now I just move it up. Defended by the rook now. They play king to f1. And they want me to take this pawn, I guess, so that they can try to make another back rank threat. I don't know. But even if I did that, it's no use. But instead, I just move the king over. And if they bring their king over, I can let them take this rook. We can trade rooks and I can take their pawns with my king. It'll be up the board. And we can get another queen anyway after we trade rooks. So that's how it could go down if I didn't turn this pawn into a queen. But now king e2. Trying to bring the king over. But it's no use. Rook to b2 check. King can't go this way. King has to go this way. And after king f1, now I can play a2, defended by the rook, and I'm about to promote. And here they resigned, but if they move the king over, then just rook to b1, check, rook takes, I take, get a queen, and we're checkmating soon. Game over. And it's time for the bonus game, and it's a good one, and it starts with d4, e6, c4, knight f6, bishop to g5, pinning the knight to the queen, and this is also known as the Indian game. b6, getting ready to fichetto the bishop, and now e4, taking control of the middle, knight can't take because it's pinned to the queen, now h6, attacking the bishop. And I could go back here, but they're about to play bishop to b7, attacking the pawn with the bishop and the knight. And I figure it's just better to take the knight now, get rid of one of the attackers. And I don't have to worry about my middle getting taken. They take back with the queen, and I figure the queen's not really in a good place right there. No trouble. A little bit more active, but I don't think it's going to be any problem. And now knight to f3, defending the pawn here, and activating my knight. They play bishop to b7. Attacking the pawn here. So I play knight to c3, defending the pawn. They pin my knight to the king with bishop to b4. And now I'm no longer defending the pawn. So I play bishop to d3, defending the pawn. Removing my queen from defending this pawn, but it's defended by the knight here. And now d6. Getting ready to bring the knight out. And a3. Bishop can't go back, so they have to take. And now my pawns are doubled up, but there's an open file here. And I'm supported in the middle. So I have a good middle, but it doubled up pawns. And I'm slightly more developed, I think. They play knight to d7, and I use that open file by playing rook to b1. And this lines the rook up with the bishop, which is undefended. And if I, can, if I can ever break this up, then the rook can take the bishop. So that's the idea here. And now they play e5, and I have to decide what to do here. Do I take? If I take, well then, I just have terrible pawns. And if they take, then I can take back with this pawn, and I have three good pawns in the middle. So I figure it's good if they take. And if I push, then the knight can come to c5, and that's a good place for the knight. I don't really want to give them that place. But it would lock down this bishop, so that's something to consider. But instead, I go for queen to a4, because this pins the knight to the king. And if they castle, there's no defender on this knight, so I can take the knight if they castle. And if they castle queen side, well then I can take on a7. And if the knight is pinned to the king, well now I have threats of c5. We can take, 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 stuff like that. So it's starting to get a little bit tactical. And they play queen to g6, attacking my pawn here, and adding another attacker to the pawn here. 
So multiple threats here. What do I do? Well, there's only one good move here. And it's actually just a castle. Because now the king defends this pawn, and taking here is no good. Because after all the trades, now rook to e1. And the king is still in the middle of the board, right? Queen's under attack, queen has to move. Queen to b7, best move according to the engine. Now it says c5 is plus two. Getting ready to fork here, and also getting ready to break everything up. I don't even know what's going on, but we're winning. So they can't take here, so what did they do? Well, I suppose they decided that having their king in the middle and having this knight pinned was just too much. And they wanted to get their king to safety, so they just decided to castle. And by castling queenside, the rook defends the knight and the king defends the knight. But now you're losing the a7 pawn. But it's kind of unclear if that loses the game or if the queen's in a bad spot now because it can't really do anything. But it is completely winning here. And I do actually take a little bit to think about this. Because if I take here, now they're taking here. So it's kind of a trade of pawns. And what's my follow-up here? I don't know what the follow-up is. So I'm thinking, should I just push this so my pawn doesn't get taken here and I have a strong middle and extra space, but then they can just play something like a5 or knight to c5. Or should I play c5 and just start breaking up the pawns here and try to attack the king? And actually, c5 is the second best move. And the best move turns out is queen captures a7. And that's what I played. And it's plus 2.5. But after bishop captures e4, now it's plus 8 and it's completely winning. And it's absolutely game over. You have to find the right moves here. And I actually considered the right move. But I was not sure where it went. But for some reason, even after considering the right move, I still thought it was wrong. And that's knight to h4. Attacking the queen. So danger levels. You have to move your queen, right? Where do you go? Well, queen to g4, right? Attacking the knight. Defending the bishop. And you're good, right? But no, f3. Attacking the queen. Take the knight. Now bishop captures e4. Defended by the pawn. And this is where I messed up. Because I saw bishop captures e4. Threatening checkmate here. But I also forgot that now the pawn is defending. Because even though I played f3 in my head... I wasn't visualizing that it defends the bishop now, and I just thought, okay, now the queen takes the bishop and there's no problem for them. But the queen can't take the bishop. Well, it should, because that's how you stop them from losing. Or they move the rook over, and now you play queen 8 8 check, and after the knight blocks, now it's just bishop c6, attacking the rook, and if the rook moves, you win. So you're winning material no matter what. Doesn't matter what they do. You're either going to checkmate or win material. But I missed it. Instead I played bishop captures e4. Because after the queen takes, now I have d5. And after queen captures c4, oh my gosh they missed it. Queen to a8 checkmate. But the game didn't end. And I was confused for about 3 seconds. But then they played knight to b8. Knights go backwards. I forgot. And I'm losing. I just lost a pawn. And I didn't checkmate. And now it's hopeless. Nothing I can really do now. But knight to d2. Attacking the queen. Now queen just goes back to a6, and I have no way to get out, so I have to trade queens. Now they're up material, my pawns are bad, their pawns are all good, all connected, and they just have a better position, and they're about to win more material. So, bring the knight up, what am I going to do? Maybe try to get the knight to here, I guess, but, I don't know. f5, knight to g3, g6, stopping my knight from coming up here, and now rook f to c1, supporting the pawn, knight to c5, rook c2, King goes to d7, now they can bring the rooks over. c4, rook to a8, attacking my pawn now. Rook to c3 to defend the pawn. Rook a4, attacking my pawns, stopping me from pushing. Also getting ready to bring the other rook over. Rook to b4, they bring the other rook over. Rook captures a4, rook captures a4, f3, knight b7, knight f1, knight a5, knight to d2 c6, d capture c6, they take with their king, they're about to take this pawn, I can't stop them, king f2, king c5, king e3, now they take the pawn, I take back, they take back, and if I take the rook here, well then I just can't defend this pawn, so I bring the king over, they take the rook anyway, and now I have my king in front of their king, but they're up two pawns and I can't stop them, they just play b5, g3, d5, h4 e4 and now the pawns are breaking through f captures e4 d captures e4 king to d2 king c4 king c2 e3 king d1 king b3 e2 and king captures a3 and i finally resign i cannot stop them from promoting i should have resigned probably 50 moves ago 
but you never know, they might disconnect. It's happened before. And there you guys go. You finally see a loss. Hope you guys enjoyed that potentially brilliant move. I don't usually share my losses, but I thought that was a great game. Thanks for watching The Bobby Bo Show. If you like these commentary videos, let me know in the comment section. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day.